Hello and welcome to my video lesson 2.1 on counting methods. So we're going to do uh, this whole topic is actually talking about perms and comms but we're going to start off with counting methods where we're going to start with the idea of t tree diagrams and then even uh, go into fundamental counting principle and uh, and how much easier it is to use that. So imagine you have two six-sided dice, one purple and one green. How many possible combinations are there to roll the dice? Um, or I should probably use the per, uh, word permutations. Uh, as we are going to be um, using that combination word for a very specific type of thing. So permutation combination mean different things. So basically, how many different ways, how many possible ways are there to roll the dice? Okay, so tree diagram versus fundamental counting principle. So there are two six-sided dice. We're going to say one is purple, so um, here is our purple one. And we have one green one. So over here is our green one. Or maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to draw it actually below. There you go, there's a green one. So how many possible ways can we can we roll the dice? Well, the purple one, we can roll it one of six ways. We can roll it one, can roll it two, can roll it three, a four, five, and a six. The green one, we can roll one of six ways. So perhaps you roll a one with the purple one, and you roll a one with the green one. Uh, one with the purple one, a two with the green one, three, four, five, and six. Wow, I could have made more room. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two. You can see how this will get tedious, but this is our tree diagram. This shows all the combinations and basically all the branching options. We can technically do this for every single question in this unit. However, you can see that this has taken a long time just to solve a two, two dice, which is a very simple situation. So how many possible options are there? Well, if we count them up, so if we circle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 options. Okay, we counted up to 36. But what can we notice about doing that? Well, hopefully you can see that there are actually six groups of six. And if you remember our, our, our uh, elementary terminology, um, that would be six groups of six. So six times six equals 36. This is now the fundamental counting principle. So for the fundamental counting principle, what we do is we draw a line um, for each situation or each time we have a choice. So in this case, we have a, uh, I guess we could go with a purple line, okay, for the purple dice, and a green line for the green dice. And we just set it up like that, fill in the blank style, and we're going to be multiplying those to get to our answer. So we will we'll write the number of uh, choices that we have for the purple situation, the number of choices we have for the green situation, and if we multiply those, we get the total. Hopefully, this shows um, the tree diagram and fundamental accounting principle fairly well. Okay, so the words and 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 the word or mean very different things. So let's take a look at the possible uh, ways that we could read this. So 
we have using the example above, so still this two six-sided dice, okay. Um, find the number of possible outcomes with an even number on P and a multiple of three on G. So P being purple. So I'm just gonna go like this for my purple one. Okay, and the G is our green. Okay, we're multiplying them and we're getting to our answer. So the question is, um, I guess I could just use blue for all that. An even number on P. So on purple, how many, uh, let's use red. How many even numbers are there? One, two, three. So there's three different even numbers. Okay, and on green, how many multiples of three? There are one, two in each situation. So we could count, again, count them up with the tree diagram, but there are two. So we can compare how this would work. So one, two, uh, three, four, five, six or three times two is six. Okay, let's do that again, um, but with this next situation. So that was an and, so we had to have both. So where we had uh, the reds over here didn't qualify, only the reds where it was both uh, there you go so just those reds would have qualified only the reds that are both in both situations it's and right so in this situation it says whoops it says or so an odd number on P um, maybe we can use this no, we can't really circle it very well with this color. That's okay. An odd number on P, so there are going to be, again, three of those. And a five, or a five on the G. So there is, um, actually, there are five of those. One, two, three, four, five, six of those. Okay, however, this is not the full picture because uh, there's an or. So the odd number ones don't count. So because we've already counted them, we don't count them twice. So we counted this one, so we don't count it twice. Counted this one, so we don't count it twice. So we actually... Um, We'll go like this, and then we'll subtract out uh, some of the situations. So this is 18, and we're going to subtract out 3, because there are 3 overlapping ones. So 15. So this is the overlap, where it is both an odd number and it's a 5. All right, um, one last situation. In a deck of 52 cards, you draw one card for, uh, from a randomly sorted pile. Find the number of possible outcomes, which include one heart and one ace. Um, so if you don't know what a deck of cards looks like, make sure you take a look. Um, there's some in the notes as well. But look at all the different cards, because this is going to show up on tests, on assignments, on the diploma. So 52 cards. Um, you can remember that there are four suits. There are 13 cards per suit. Okay, and then let's see if there's if there's anything else important, then we'll do that. So one heart. So in that department, it'll be um, 13 possible choices out of 52 cards. Okay, and then and. So, uh, sorry, not times. Uh, one ace, which there are four of those. So 
So how many possible outcomes are there? Oh, which include, uh, oh, I guess this has to be an or because it draws one card. It's only one card. So that doesn't, that doesn't, I was wondering why that doesn't make sense. Okay, so it has to be an, an or statement for it to make sense in this case. So 13 possible cards that would be a heart, and there's four possible cards that could be an ace, but there's one overlap where it is the heart of aces, or the ace of hearts, there you go. Um, so that would be 16. Okay, again, another or situation. Pause the video, try it out for yourself, and then press play and see if you get the same answer. Okay, one even number or a spade, and this is a number, not a, not a um, face card. So the first 10 cards are numbers. Ace just counts as a 1. Okay, so a spade is 13, right? Um, an even number would be, there are 10 numbers, so 5 of those. But there are four suits, so five times four. Okay, but there's also going to be some overlap. Um, so we're actually going to minus five for all of the spades. So this is going to be 20 plus so 33 minus five, 28. All right. I hope this video helps you understand some of these counting methods, uh, tree diagrams, fundamental counting principle, and especially these uh, fill-in-the-blank type style ones, as we're going to be using them moving forward. Good luck!